I'm um, having kind of a weird week. I just got off of my antidepressants, and uh, oh, wait, no, no, I just don't have healthcare. <laughs> uh, but I can do this cool new thing now. I can orgasm. Hey. Wow, thank you. Wow, thank you, uh, ladies only. Uh, <laughs> I was never able to do it before, now I can. But now I'm in this really weird headspace where I'm very horny, but very sad. <laughs> so I know how men feel now, and <laughs> it's hard. This is a hard life. I'm just weeping and jerking off all day. How do you do it? Uh, I, it, sorry. Uh, it's hard being horny and sad, you know what I mean? Like, it puts a lot of pressure on the hookup. That's what I've noticed, right? Like, now when I'm with a guy, I'm like, you better make me come or I'm gonna kill myself. Oh. <laughs> And they don't like that. <laughs> or they get more hard, and I like that. <laughs> yeah, my mental health is declining rapidly. I, I am trying to be better at like being alone, you know what I mean? Uh, so I have actually started drinking alone. That's fun. I love drinking alone, okay? I know a lot of people are worried about me, and... <laughs> I think because people think it's a sign that you're an alcoholic, but I don't think that's true. I think drinking alone is actually the best way to stay out of trouble. Drinking alone, you're not gonna get into a fist fight, you're not gonna hook up with anyone. In fact, drinking alone is the only way I'll text my family group chat. <laughs> you know, you give me a bottle of wine in an empty apartment and I will say I love you to my dad, okay? <laughs> and he will thumbs up that shit. <laughs> Because we don't say that in this family. <laughs> yeah, we don't. I have immigrant parents, by the way. I have immigrant parents, and that's why we really don't. Uh, I'm half Arab. I'm half Arab. A lot of people say that... <laughs> one clap, so sad. Uh, a lot of people say that I don't look Arab. I get that all the time, that I don't look Arab. I never know how to respond to that. Uh, I think I should stop saying, oh, thank God. <laughs> They hate that. I also, uh, I never got the sex talk, right? I, never, I, I have immigrant parents, never got the sex talk growing up. Uh, I actually had my first sexual awakening on chat roulette. Do you guys remember that? Do you guys remember chat roulette? That was crazy. Who, <laughs> that was an insane, it was that webcam chat room, you know? And parents never knew about it. Parents never knew that we were on there looking at dick and balls. They didn't know, <laughs> right? They just thought that we were gonna see porn one day or whatever. Meanwhile, I saw a grown adult man on chat roulette put a full raw cucumber in himself, just fully in there, and that's only because I told him to do it. <laughs> do you know how much power that is for a 13 year old? Do you guys know? <laughs> just me chanting deeper. Do you guys know how fucked up that is? <laughs> Was that too far? Okay. <laughs> I have been trying to relieve stress though, you know, because I don't go to therapy. I'm trying to relieve stress in other ways. I actually started kickboxing. That's fun, kickboxing. Uh, I like it because you get to fight someone at the end of class. They pair you up with someone and you spar with them. And they paired me up with this guy named James, okay? And this is a real thing that happened. I kicked his ass so hard, he didn't come back to class, okay? Uh, he was 12, but I still feel like I got his ass, you know what I mean? They really did that, by the way. They paired me up with a 12-year-old boy named James, a little, a little jumpster, a little tub scout, and I was just beating him up. I was beating him up. It, it just felt like bullying <laughs> the whole time. I guess I didn't have to call him little bitch during it, but I did, and... <laughs> I feel strong now, though. I feel very empowered, you know? Because I, uh, I go on little dates with little men. That's what I do. Just little, little tiny dates with little tiny men. I did go on a little tiny date with a tiny man, and he had a little mustache. And he told me that he was growing his mustache out for prostate cancer awareness. It's like a whole movement that's happening, I guess. And I don't know, I don't think it's true. I'm like, no, you just want a mustache, you know? Don't seem like a good person. Oh, okay, in that case, I'm growing my bush out for lupus. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I did have to go through a breakup not too long ago, and I think I know what happened was uh, we had this really bad conversation about how many people we've slept with. Do you guys know about this conversation? It's so bad. It's just for the drama, right? <laughs> It's like, it's so counterproductive. Like the number is never good, you know? No one's ever heard the number and been like, that's perfect. <laughs> that's a really good number, you know? And he didn't want to answer, so what he ended up saying was a handful. <laughs> he was like, I don't know, just a handful. And I was like, okay, but like a handful of what? I need a better gauge, like a handful of apples? <laughs> 
or a handful of Skittles. Because that's a different number, right? And he looks at me and he thinks about it and he was like, I don't know, like a handful of rice. <laughs> I was like, no! Long grain or couscous? What does that mean? <laughs> so I've been going on more first dates now and this is a little fun thing I've been doing, by the way, on first dates. I'll go to a bar with a guy, we get a drink and after my first sip, I go, first one in eight years. <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> They get freaked out, it's so funny. Um, but I have been going to like a lot of bars and I went to a bar recently with a guy and I overheard this woman order a Britney Spears at the bar, that was the drink she ordered. No one knew what it was. She had to explain to the bartender. She goes, oh, it's just a Shirley Temple without the cherry. <laughs> and I was like, that's cute, right? That's a fun way to order a drink, right? I was like, I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start ordering drinks like that. So here are some, here are some drink names I came up with, okay? So I go, hey, bartender, hey, can I get a Desperate Housewife? Can I get a Desperate Housewife? That is just a martini with a vibrator in it, okay? <laughs> Shaken, not stirred. I have 33 more of these, okay. Um, okay, how about this, hey, bartender, can I get a misogynist? Uh-oh, can I get a misogynist? Uh, that is just a white Russian, okay? <laughs> That's fun, come on, we love that, okay. Okay, how about this? Hey, can I get a Republican? Uh-oh, can I get a Republican? Uh, that is just an old-fashioned extra bitters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do the other side. I'll do it. Can I get a liberal? Can I get a liberal? That is just an abortion on the beach. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, okay, how about this? Can I, get a, can I get a guilty? Can I get a guilty as charged? Can I get a guilty? That is just a tequila sunrise extra OJ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> R.I.P. Okay, uh, I'll do one more. <laughs> Okay, how about this? Can I do, can I, can I get, you guys aren't gonna like this, by the way. Um, can I get an R. Kelly? Oh, uh-oh, can I get an R. Kelly? <laughs> that is just a cup of piss. Um, all right, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much.